Welcome to Intercraft channel. If you have watched the previous episode, you should have been able to figure out the speed and power for photo engraving. Just a reminder for every material and each line interval, the whole process should be repeated to find the right settings. Just keep in mind, smaller the pixel size, lower the speed and power. So if you have uh, found the settings for your material and chosen line intervals, you should have burnt a ribbon of 0-100% to shades of grey, like this. Correct combination of pixel size, speed and power delivered the light shades of grey, though you may have seen almost half of the ribbon as the same engraving strengths or color. What I will explain in this video is how to adjust the shades of grey of a photo to be able to engrave full and wide range of shades of grey. By applying the given explanations in the previous episode and this one, you would be able to choose a line interval, first find the right speed and power, and then be able to find the right black level for adjusting the photo. Whether add some marks for each 5 or 10% of the ribbon, or scale it to a noun width and use a ruler to measure a part of the ribbon which is of interest. For instance, from what I have engraved here, which is 100 mm wide, we can see from 55 mm to 100 mm, there is basically only one shade, a dark and fully burnt. What I will do is to remove the cells from 60 to 100 mm, which means 40% of the full range of the shades of grey. I use GIMP for adjusting the level of the photos. I've imported the ribbon of 0 to 100% shades of grey. 0 is black and 255 is white. To remove 40% on the black side of this ribbon, I should remove 102 from the whole range. In other words, stretching 0 to 60% shades of grey to a full range of 0 to 100%. When I run the next test, instead of engraving 0 to 100 person, I will burn the same ribbon but only covering 0 to 60 percent of the range with the similar tone. From the detailed images, we can see as well that the last cell of this 0 to 60 percent ribbon has a similar distribution of black and white spaces as the cell of 60 percent and a full range shades of grey of 0 to 100%. And what I get on the top ribbon is to put the top 40% of densely distributed dots away. Let us engrave the top ribbon and check what we get. What I can see is a highly improved white shades of grey. Still I assume the last two cells have the same shade. What I do next is to remove the last cell, which is 5% of the whole ribbon. But this ribbon is 0 to 60%, and 5% of it means is a 3% of the full range. Then I would remove 43% of the whole level, which it gives me 110. After I engrave with a ribbon of 0 to 50%, 7% or level of 110 to 255, I may say the last cell shows some unburnt spots. My conclusion is the level of 102 to 255 worked better. Here I engraved the same image with 254 lines per inch LPI. The left is with the level of 0 to 255 and the right one with 102 to 255. Isn't it cool when the settings and the photo adjustments are right and we get the shades of grey correctly? What I did here was to remove a portion of the level which gives the overlaps of the dots and lines. And most importantly, every time we get the engraving results as we expect and as we can see them on the computer screen. 
There is a big difference between the size of the laser beam at the focal point and its trace of engraving on different materials. But with the technique explained in this video, we do not need to figure out the exact size of the dots to be able to engrave nicely, but only figuring out beyond what shades of gray the overlaps of the dots produces the same shade. The last step is to find the reasonable enhancement. I did this engraved image with a radius of 10 pixels and amount of 500 on Lightburn. I will explain the correlation for different LPIs and the parameters for enhancement in another video. Thanks for watching and see you another time.